I am making a cheese with eight gallons of milk. Well, it's actually probably seven and a half gallons of whole milk. And then I added a quart of heavy whipping cream from the store. It's spiced Gouda. It has cumin seeds in, and I used this uh, M LM57 adjunct, meso adjunct, and Floridanica as the cultures. I got the recipe from the cookbook uh, Kitchen Creamery by Luella Hill. This is the first time I'm making this cheese. Well, no, I made it once last week without the cumin. Feels like a fabulous cheese. I love how it smells. I love the whole process. It seems pretty straightforward, no extra hassle. So I'm making it again, this time with the cumin. So it's a half cup of cumin for the eight gallons and you bring it to a boil with water and then let it simmer for two minutes and strain it. It looks like an awful lot of cumin and I have no idea how it's gonna be. I have made a farmhouse cheddar with cumin in it before, but the cumin was not soaked first with boiling water, I don't think. And this really seems to release the, the smell, the flavor, and I'm hopeful that it will make a really yummy cheese, but we will see. So you bring the milk up to 86 degrees and I bring it up over high heat and I stir it every now and then. And once it's up there, you add the Floridanica, which was a teaspoon of it. Sprinkle that over the top as well as the LM57 meso adjunct. And that was a quarter teaspoon. Once it's sprinkled over the surface, you let it sit for two minutes undisturbed to rehydrate and then stir it in and I think I cultured it for 30 minutes. Once the 30 minutes are up, I added uh, calcium chloride and the only reason I'm adding it this time is because I had the store-bought heavy whipping cream in that is pasteurized. It does something to make the cheese be more, the cream yield more once it's been pasteurized and processed. So that is a, a teaspoon and a half of calcium chloride. I just mix it in with some cool tap water, pour it over the top, stir it in. And that is the rennet a teaspoon and a half of rennet in some cool tap water. And you stir it in, in a gentle up and down motion. They say not to break the surface too much and you don't like swivel it much. I just scoop down and scrape along the bottom, pull up and try to get in all the different sides of the kettle all the way around. And then I just kind of go up and down. You don't want to go much longer than 30 seconds because the rennet will start to coagulate and yeah, you want to get your spoon out of there before it actually starts its process and gets to work. As I get up to the top, I go slower and more gently and just kind of steady it as I, as I finish it up. Then it sits for an hour. That time is a little bit interchange. I mean, it's not exactly a set time. You have to kind of check it. Sometimes it will set up quicker, sometimes slower. So this is after an hour and I'm testing it. You can see how it's, it's, it's thick, it's solid. And you bring it up and it kind of breaks and pops open. But as it is slumping back, it seems a little bit loose to me. I mean, it's probably okay, but I decided to let it go just for another 10 minutes because I wanted to make sure it was fully set. So that's after another 10 minutes. And there you can see a, a clean split. And 
and now I am cutting the curd and a half inch cubes or three quarter inch cubes I don't know I'm learning that I think cutting it a little bit bigger works better for me especially with these cheeses that are not heated so high so I do vertical cuts one way and then I do diagonal cuts and I scrape down in as far as I can with my with my knife and then I go back the other way I go sideways back and forth perpendicular to that both directions which this is not perfect at all it is rather messy and I get small curds in there but I don't know how to do it without yeah this is the best I figured out to do so far and then I go and do vertical cuts that are perpendicular to the ones I did in the beginning. Now once these are cut, I will put the lid on and let it it's called letting the curds heal, where you let them just set for, I think it's five minutes or 10 minutes. Sometimes it's two minutes. What do I do here? Five-ish minutes, I guess, yeah. And after that time is up, you can see that the whey is starting to, you can just see the whey. It's separating a little bit, the curds are firming. Then I'm going to start stirring, but I like to use my hand, especially in a big pot like this. And so I spray my arm and hand with my 50% white vinegar, 50% water, just to make sure I have a fully clean stirring arm. Just lift a little bit at the top start being very gentle you don't want to like rake through the curds and split them they are going to be breaking as you go along um it's not it's not a problem it's just you want to go slow the hard part about cheese making for me is figuring out how to handle the curds and i want to show you at least what i figured out so far i don't know if i'm exactly doing it right but i think it's getting better so i'm reaching down to the bottom pulling up and here I am now. I have my book set up on a stool and my curds. And I am now, okay, the clock is set for 20 minutes. And this, the heat is off. This is still at 86 degrees. And what I'm doing is just stirring the curds for 20 minutes. And as I do that, I take a knife, or sometimes I use my hands, but I think a knife is probably better for the curds. And I'm just finding the big ones and just cutting them. Just don't cut your hand because then you would get blood in the pot and then you would ruin your whole thing of cheese. I haven't done that yet, but I probably will at some point. There's more and more whey that's coming out and the cheese, the curd is, it will start to shrink as it, as it gets stirred. So there's, you don't want to stir it fast. You don't want to be rough and there's no heat at this point. So this is at the end of the 20 minutes, I think. You can see how much more whey there is, how much the curd has shrunk. And now I let the curds set for, I think it was five or 10 minutes and they settle to the bottom and I'm supposed to take off 20% of the whey. So it's easy to scoop it off in the beginning, but as you get closer to the curd, it starts to, it hasn't, it hasn't knitted very much because the temperature hasn't risen and it's still pretty loose. So you have to go slow along the edge like that to make sure you don't get any curds with it. So there I'm down to the level of the curds. You can see, you can see how they're kind of floaty. They're not packed together and that's about a gallon and a half or so of the whey. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up water to, I want 140 degree, 145 degree water. So I used hot top water and I boiled water. Um, and this water is going to go into the pot with the curds and start raising the temp. So right now that boiled water and tap water makes 
144 degrees. It's supposed to be 140, a little bit hotter is okay. So I pour in a little bit at a time and then as quick as I can, I wanna stir it in because I don't want certain curds to be cooking faster than other curds. I'm going to repeat this process a number of times until I bring the liquid, bring it up to the top of the kettle like it was. And I keep checking the temp as I go along. Once it starts getting hotter, I'm wanting to bring it up to 100 degrees. And you do it slowly. I could dump in a whole bunch of boiling water, but that would make the curds cook on the outside and still be loose on the inside. And you want to bring them up at a uniform, steady temperature. So you just keep adding and keep adding till you get up to the same level. And ideally, that's the amount of water that you add at 144 degrees, if you've taken out exactly 20%, is supposed to bring the cheese to 100 degrees. Mine didn't, as you will see, but it's pretty close. And I think at this point it was maybe right around 94 degrees. So it had been 86 in the beginning. It had probably dropped a little bit um, during the whole culturing and renneting, renetizing, whatever you call that process, and then cutting the curds. So it had probably dropped, I would imagine, maybe to 83, 82. So I'm actually bringing it up quite a bit. It's already gotten to 94, but it still needs to go to 100. And now I need more space to add more hot water. So I'm taking out a little bit more of this whey. The recipe says that I can turn the heat on and you can see I'm trying that. And then I decide, no, it's too many degrees. Like if it was at 99 degrees or 98, I might just turn on the heat and take it the last couple degrees. But I decide because it is so, um, so far from 100 degrees, I take out a little bit more whey and then I heat up more water and I add some more hot water. So here's more hot water, bringing it up. And by the time I add in all that water, it is 90, I think it was 98 or 99 degrees. And so I just turned on the stove for the last couple degrees. Once it, the curds reach the temperature of 100, and, 100 degrees, I uh, hold at that temperature, set the timer for 40 minutes, and then I stir. And I just stand there and stir for 40 minutes, right there, I'm at the last degree or so. And after 40 minutes is up, so I didn't even show you this part, this is what the curd looks like. You can squeeze it and it holds together, and look how small they are, and then you poke it with your finger and it just crumbles apart. That is the finished curd. I let it sit in the pot for about five or 10 minutes so the curds settle, and now I'm, it's called pitching the curds, or it's straining off the way. And my niece had popped in, so I got her to hold the strainer for me that just catches any curds that are going to get, you know, slip down the drain. Most of the curds have set, settled to the bottom in one solid mass. You'll be able to see here in a second. There they are. And I just kind of press on them and pour off. And I pressed on it a little bit more just to get a little bit of the way out. Not hard, just enough to get some of the extra mess off. And man, it is a heavy kettle. Keep funking it around. And now I add the cumin. Just crumble it in with my fingers. Work it in. I'm not squeezing the curd so much as I'm kind of breaking it up, just kind of um, raking my hands through it. You don't want to uh, 
press or squeeze curd. The curd does set up pretty solid pretty quickly. It's kind of sometimes can be tough to work with if you don't get to it right away. You want to stay, stay on it. So now I put it in my cheese mold. I have lined it with a cheesecloth and there's way at the bottom. It just keeps coming out of the curd so it gets drippy and just keep scooping it up and putting it in. There's no really easy way to do this. It's just messy. As it fills up, I kind of press it down in a little bit just so I can fit it all in. And then at the end, I end up lifting up the pot and scooping it, scooping it as best I can and then tipping it in once it's at the very, very bottom because that is a super heavy kettle. I kind of arrange it at the top so there's not, like because I get a pile of cumin seed at the very bottom. I kind of work that in. And you can see all the whey draining out, how much has already come out. That's why I put it in a cookie sheet. It's clear whey, it's good. I hold it right around 20 pounds. It's just a light, pressure. So after an hour, I come back and I take it up, I tilt it off, take that out, dump all the way, and then I'm going to flip it. In that first hour, as the weight settles and as the curd settles, I have to keep coming back and pushing the weight down so I feel a little bit of resistance because otherwise it's just sitting there, there's no weight on it the way this, this press is. So I pull it out. And it is going to be crumbly. It has not knitted together. It's only been one hour. So you have to work very carefully that it doesn't just all disintegrate. I just wrap it back up again, slip it back into the mold. And now I'm going to press it at about the same about the same weight, 20 to 30 pounds for another two or three hours. And then I flipped it again and pressed it till bedtime. So it's another three hours or so. And then I flipped it one more time and I've set it a little bit higher, maybe at 40 pounds and let it go overnight. So this is the morning. It's been overnight. I'm pulling it out. I was just testing my kettle because I'm using a different one. I wanted to make sure the cheese would fit into it. And it smells delicious. And you can see it's knitted together. It is a solid cheese. Made my husband smell it. So now it goes into the kettle and I'm going to cover it with a salt brine and brine it for 12 to 16 hours. I did it all day long. So I pour the salt brine, saturated salt brine over top and you'll see when the cheese lifts. Boop, there it started floating. And I just kept pouring in, I wanna get enough brine and that might be enough, but then I was like, well, maybe I want a little bit more. I just wanted to have plenty of floaty room. Push it towards the back before I put the sprinkle of the salt on because as I push it, the brine will slosh and wash off the salt that's on top. So put a lid on it. This has probably been six hours, eight hours or so, and then I come in and I'm flipping it. You can see all the top of it is kind of wet. Just flip it down in. And salt the surface again. And then I let it go the rest of the way till right before I went to bed that night when I took it out. I don't think I show that though, but I took it out and set it on the mat overnight. So here we are the next morning. It's been air drying all night. You can see the residual salt that was on top and the cheese is beginning to get dry. You 
And here I'm going to flip it because it's been 12 hours at room temp. The salt is coming off. It's a little bit puffed up and the top has some salt on it still from that was a little bit wet from being in the brine. So I rub that over the top and then I'm going to let it air dry for another 12 hours or so, maybe another day, and then I'll vacuum pack it and age it for four months.